What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of Falcons in Focus. I'm Scott Baer. That's Tori McElhaney, the gentleman to my left. Mr. Drake London, Drake, welcome to the program. Thank you, thank uh, you. The program, ooh, that yeah. sounds more more official, professional than what this is. Yeah. What, what this conversation is going to be, especially yeah. because I'm just going to lead off not with a football question, not with the fact that I went to UCLA and you went to USC, oh. and it's going to be a point of contention at some point during <laughs> this interview. Tell them what your friends say all the time when you're tweeting about. Yeah, it. I constantly get texts whenever because I've written some nice things about you before, and mm. they say, "How can you do that? How can you?" Yeah. Promote a USC guy. <laughs> At first, it was hard. Now I'm used to it. He right. does so many good things that I don't have a choice. Part yeah. of the job. Do you uh, also have a similar disdain for UCLA? Yeah. I feel yeah. like you have yeah. to if you went there. Well, it's like everything since I've been growing up, I never really liked them. So <laughs> that really hurts me. Yeah. Deep uh, seated. Deep down. Yeah. Deep down. But somehow I think we're going to find a way to be friends. Um, <laughs> first question, though, is not about football, it's about Drake betting on Drake. Mm. And this is my favorite thing that's uh, ever happened, like draft wise. Right. And so, I'm so curious about it. Yeah. Right. So let's have you tell the story, but just Drake, the rapper, <laughs> bet $100,000 that Drake London would be the first wide receiver taken. For those who don't recall, he was. Yep. Yeah. And Drake cashed in big, and you woke up to a billion texts saying Drake bet on you and won. Mm-hmm. Also yeah. taken in the draft, I should say. Yeah, Not take just it, taken. Right. Taken. <laughs> Not like the yeah, movie. <laughs> taken in the draft. So. Take, uh, take me through it from your perspective. And that's pretty crazy. He bet a hundred grand on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I just woke up to like, Oh, you saw this, you see this. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? You know, <laughs> and I see this thing on Twitter talking about Drake bet on Drake. And I go to the thing and it has my name on it, you know, and <laughs> supposedly he bet on me um, to be the first wide receiver taken off the board, which I think was a smart idea and he <laughs> got it through. But, um, if Drake sees this, I'm waiting on you. I need I need half of that. I was yeah. just going to say, know, you deserve you, a cut of that. Yeah, I know you got a lot of money, man. <laughs> <laughs> just I'm like, going to need half of that. <laughs> <laughs> like a certain percentage. I think that we were flying to Los Angeles or something, mm-hmm. and, and on that private charter tarmac was Drake's plane. Yeah. You should have mm-hmm. walked over there and yeah. been like, dude, pay up. Just like knock on yeah. the door of the... <laughs> The plane, just be like, hey man, it's exactly, me. Exactly, it's exactly. Drake. <laughs> Have you ever crossed paths with him, even through like an Instagram DM or anything like that? No, 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 no. I think he's too, he's too up there. To <laughs> in contact. I would have to go through a couple people. Yeah. Drake, if you're listening to the Falcons and Focus podcast, which if not, this you Drake be. deserves a cut of that money. Let me I know. Think he made, let me know, Aubrey Graham. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's Drake on Drake, but let me know. <laughs> yeah. he made like over two hundred thousand dollars off of that bet. Yeah. Like that's mm-hmm. just crazy. Now, speaking of bets, Arnold Abiketti has sat in this seat that you've been sitting in for the last few minutes. (laughs) And talked some serious trash about you. Did he? It wasn't, I wouldn't say serious trash, but he did say, and I quote, I could beat Drake in one-on-one. On On what? Basketball? Basketball. Yeah, of course he said that. (laughs) All right, I'm going to put this on record for (laughs) you. Arnold (laughs) Abiketti, a.k.a. AK, runs his mouth about everything. He thinks he does that, everything. (laughs) And everybody in that locker room knows that I'll get him on that one-on-one. And anything. We could do anything. I, I don't care what it is. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to be him. Horse dunk contest, actual one-on-one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No chance. Do you think you could beat him as a pass rusher, though? That's that's maybe the one thing. He got his doctor degree from me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> is that it? Mm-hmm. You, you yeah. taught him everything he yeah, knows? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's nice. Great. So th- I think on draft night, this video really got circulated. Yeah, that was where I saw it. 540 slam. In high school? Mm -hmm. In high school. Yeah. Can you still do it? Yes. When's the last time you tried it? Last time I tried it, uh, I think it was probably about a year ago. I'm kind of just toying around, seeing if I could do it again. Just messing around, (laughs) throwing down a 540 dunk in high school. What was the reaction of the other certainly smaller and less athletic high school (laughs) athletes on the court at the time? Did everybody just go nuts? Yeah, you watch that video. Everyone freaks out. Yeah, it was was pretty crazy. Um, The story behind that was like, you know, going there. It was like an all-star game for my county or whatever. And... um, it was at Sierra Canyon. We was just dunking in warms, and it kind of felt different. Like, the summer was in the air. Everybody <laughs> was really, really bouncy. Everybody was getting up there. And they told me I wasn't going to do the dunk contest because they had people in there like K.J. Martin. I didn't know if Cash Stanley was going to be in there. And here you're thinking bounce. that these are all guys yeah. who are, like, yeah. these little yeah. high no, schoolers in there. No, He's they like, are no, all big time. Are, yeah, these they are your guys. Um, 
close friend of mine, Jaime Hawkes, who I battle against with in high school a lot. Um, some real jumpers, and I was like, nah, I'm not going to be in there. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just going to go out there and play in the All-Star game. Then I was feeling it during warm-ups, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try 540. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just going <laughs> to see what it does. Had you and done it before then? No, nah, I've really? never, wow. I, I wow. never even attempted to do it before that. And I was just like, you know, I'm just going to keep on rotating, and I see what happens. And it flushed, so. Wow. Oh, wow. Well. That's that impressive. Is, <laughs> yeah. I love that. I, I have, it gives me the jitters. I love it. <laughs> I and have, the coffee. <laughs> I have so many questions about being a two-sport athlete, mm-hmm. especially at the level that you did it. Like, obviously, being good enough to play both sports is one thing, but just all of the logistics Mm -hmm. around, especially if you play football and you play baseball, there's some separation in in college sports. Basketball is right up against it, right? Like, like were there some crazy situations that you're like going from one practice to another or from a game back and forth? Like how'd that situation work? Yeah. So in the front half of everything, so I was on football scholarship, Mm -hmm. right? Right. Cause they're the money makers of the, of the school. Mm So I was fully, football and then i was technically a walk-on on basketball okay but they already offered me before that so it was kind of like you right know, well okay. and basketball like teams are smaller so they yeah. only have so many mm-hmm. roster spots scholarship spots unlike football that has a little bit more yeah exactly so i would say probably the craziest time for me was freshman year coming back from a bowl game and i was the only one on the team everybody's finished everybody mm-hmm. gets to go home mm-hmm. you know had their little break i was the only one on the team who had to hop on a plane the next day and go to washington pullman to to go try to catch up with the basketball team and figure out what they were doing and <laughs> figure out what type of offense they're running and uh, it just, it was a whole lot of stuff and getting to Pullman for uh, for those of us who have been on Pac-12 road trips yeah. that's not easy that's an outpost no it's yeah it's really kind of <coughs> out there and of course it had to be Pullman that yeah had right <laughs> Uh, I, it was just it was during the cold it was snowing out there like it it was a bunch of stuff but I wouldn't change anything you know about yeah. it. I love that. And something that I was when we were doing our preliminary research on before this podcast, Mm -hmm. there was a quote that I came across and I believe it was your high school basketball coach. Mm -hmm. And he was talking, he was asked the question of, you know, he was saying, I was talking to Drake one time and he was talking and I was asking him like, do you really want to do this? Do you really want to do football and basketball and try and do it all and be a student athlete and Mm -hmm. all that? And his, re- your response to him, and this is through him, what he said is he, <laughs> that you said, coach, what else am I going to do? I don't have a big social circle. I don't really go out. I'm pretty much a homebody. Yeah. Is that still who you are now? <laughs> like five, six years later. To the T. Yeah. Um, really? Um, I mean, nothing against people. Like I love everybody. I don't <laughs> yeah. have anything wrong with it, but um, it's just, I like my alone time. I like to be by myself. I got a little puppy who I'm with all the time. You so have a puppy? Like, yeah. What? Okay. Name of the puppy. What the puppy is? Yeah. Um. So her name is Stella. Stella. She just turned two new, two years two years old. Probably I think it was last month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. She's a little pit bull. Probably oh. Like 55, 60 pounds, and she's a delinquent, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love I love pits too mm-hmm. because they have such a a reputation with I think a lot of people. But if you've never been around a pit bull you don't know how like sweet they are yeah is yeah. she a sweetie oh she's such a sweetie and um she don't play about hers uh, <laughs> at all but um <laughs> yeah anybody who comes around the crib i mean all the play all of all of my teammates know who i've been to my house you know she's she's a sweet dog yeah. um she don't do nothing crazy she just acts crazy to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah did you get her before the draft mm-hmm. i assume yeah. like yeah. a year uh-huh. like maybe around the time yeah. that you any were college students watching this don't get a dog while you're in college <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing you could do i know you lonely and stuff like that but don't do it um <laughs> i got her in college yeah. okay yeah. yeah nice that's a lot i can, i feel like i couldn't even take care of a dog now as, as like an adult that's why she's a little crazy because she was college raised <laughs> <laughs> she was in the dorms she's raised in a college yeah. town yeah that's right <laughs> That's so, so funny. So your parents have been very supportive going to all your games. That's a lot of games between football <laughs> and basketball for 10 plus years, probably. I yeah. mean, but like, how cool is that to have that, that kind of support system? Like they were out here for the draft, right? Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. It just seems like they've always kind of been there for you. How, like how big of an influence have they been? How important was that, that despite the fact you were doing everything, they were always mm-hmm. like right there with you. I mean, you. it meant the world to me. Um, and it helped me keep me in a good mental space. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was just, it's everything to have your parents there. Um, and like I said, the mental space too, like I'm not doing it for anybody else but them and but 
for my mom's approval, my dad's approval, my sister's approval, like, oh, you did a good job today, then I, it's all that matters is to hear it from their voice, you know? Um, so when they come down and they support me and they show love, yeah, it just means the world. Oh. Are they still traveling a lot? Yeah, I got to tell them to chill out sometimes. <laughs> like, man, flying back and forth to Cali, you know. That's a long it's, flight. It's a five-hour flight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you still got to wake up. They're still going to work. They're still <laughs> doing their, their regular jobs and all that stuff. Um, you know, I told them, you know, <laughs> you don't have to do that no more. But they're, <laughs> yeah. still, they're still willing to do it. Um, but, yeah, I just thank them every day. I'm, I'm just blessed to have them. You well. know? That's so sweet. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I relate, I think, too, to what you're talking about, like their approval. I know anytime I write something really good, it's like I really don't care about what anybody else thinks mm-hmm. as long as my dad reads it. And he's yeah. like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also found I ran across another quote from your mom. And mm-hmm. this was probably a few years ago. It may have been even before you even went to uh, to college or anything. But she was talking about how you are a very different person on the field and on the court than you are at home. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about how she was like, he's a funny kid. And she was like, he loves to laugh. He loves pulling pranks. And she kind of made the, the comment that most people never see that side of him. Yeah. Now, my question isn't necessarily like, why don't people see that side of you? I don't care that people don't see <laughs> that. Thing. What I'm actually curious about, you're a little brother and your sister, it, for those that don't know, his sister's a boss and I want to be her best friend. <laughs> um, but I would love to have her on the podcast. Not that we don't want you, but I'd also love for her to be on the podcast. But what little brother, little annoying brother things did you pull growing up with her? <laughs> Anything you could imagine. <laughs> just constantly nagging her, mm-hmm. opening up her door just to see what she's doing and then leaving it open and walking away. <laughs> like just, just eh, anything I could possibly do. But it was giving back to me full force. You oh, know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, she, yeah. It was just back and forth our, our whole life, but it was all love there. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's my best friend. Yeah. yeah. I, I was going to ask about your relationship with her because um, as a big sister myself, I have two little sisters. I don't have brothers, yeah. but I know how close like we are. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about like your sister and, and how influential she's been for you, and not just like in your life but especially at this point of time point in time because she's popular and Mm -hmm. fantastic in her own right and to kind of help you along in that way yeah i mean ever since we were little i mean my sister's been so independent um i mean both of our parents are there they're Mm -hmm. both supportive of us and 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 loved us but she always just i want to do stuff by herself and then get it done by herself and for me to see that at a young age um a young independent woman doing what she wants to do and succeeding at it was something really really big for me and um something i want to follow in my follow in her footsteps and and figure it out for myself too and then on top of that you know how you say she's boss and she's doing all that stuff (laughs) um i'm not the big one in my family she is yeah she has a 270 thousand more instagram followers than you. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah so she she'd be traveling the world she'd be doing her mm-hmm. thing and um and it's really inspiring for me to see that and then also too she gives me game about all that stuff right you know um just how to how to navigate yourself through the social media world mm-hmm. and 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 to put yourself out there on a good platform so it kind of go hands in hand hand in hand and um yeah we kind of just piggyback off of each other yeah. yeah that's really cool and something else i was reading she did i think it was an interview or something with um i think it was beauty by us and mm-hmm. i will say she's very popular amongst like a lot of my girlfriends like mm-hmm. they they don't not to not to badger <laughs> the point but they're like <laughs> oh like Drake London, isn't he the sister of, of yeah. Michaela, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Michaela. And yeah. he, they were like, are you talking to him today? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, ask ask about this. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to continue to ask about his sister. We got to talk about him yeah. too. But I will say she did this interview and she was talking, they were talking about like her vibe, like her fashion vibe and all that kind of stuff. And she, they're asking like what she wears and how she decides what she wears. And she's like, well, it's 100% on my mood, but I like to think that my vibe is like, quote, like, cool older sister on the block Mm -hmm. is how she dresses and i loved that first of all now you actually are she actually is the older sister on your block she is your older sister Mm -hmm. does she ever give you grief about anything that you wear Uh, you know no she doesn't does she ever help you out yeah she tries to okay nice Mm -hmm. nice yeah does she like I feel like I would be I would be badgering all the time and be like, yo, wear these shoes with this shirt, please. And thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't it, it wasn't like that too bad because my, my mom made sure, you know, that I wasn't wearing nothing dingy or, nothing <laughs> like, you know, ripped or anything like that. And I was 
color coordinated oh, all yeah. and, <laughs> and everything like that so it wasn't too big but i had a couple of times where she was looking at me a little bit like what are you wearing for real <laughs> so like, why are you wearing yeah. that bro <laughs> mm-hmm. i think if i read this right how tall were you in the eighth grade five five six five seven okay which is how tall I am now, for right. reference. Yeah. Here's here's the rough part for me. I was also 5'6 in the eighth grade. <laughs> and then now, all these years later, I'm still 5'6. <laughs> Drake, you're not. You're you're a little bit taller. So I mean, like, yeah. like did you come in kind of a, and like did the growth spurt kind of turn you into athlete? I mean, no, no, like, no. Did you grow like crazy like as a freshman or? Yeah, it was. Um, so I mean, I wasn't on the short side. It's it's kind of funny how it went. So like when I was younger, elementary, I was bigger than everybody else. Yeah, I was probably like five three like this uh, as a fourth grader running <laughs> that's around what there, i'm yeah. saying like i was i was bigger than everybody else and then everybody caught up to me in middle school then i was on the shorter side uh-huh. in like eighth grade five six um and then when i hit like freshman year i got up to like six two and then it just went up to like six four six five around mm-hmm. um, sophomore year so it was it was a crazy time. I was like a little deer out there. I didn't know how to move my body or anything like that, you know? I just imagine, like, you know how dogs, when they, like, are around six or seven months old, those big dogs, and they're kind of, like, long and lanky and don't big really... Paws. And they have yeah, big Yeah, don't, don't know yeah. what to do with, like, their bodies. That's kind of what I picture. Yeah, it was exactly like that. I was, I was going through it. I mean, I had, <laughs> I had growing pains. I had a bunch of stuff. It was crazy. And then he ends up... At a basketball all star game, throwing down a 540. You know, Dunk. full circle. Yeah, yeah just, I, found, yeah. I found myself. <laughs> <laughs> he, you ended up okay, man. It's all right. Now, fast forward to draft night. Mm-hmm. Draft night was really crazy. And I think what a lot of people don't know is the draft has been very different for a lot of people going through it the last couple of years because of COVID and because of the pandemic. And a lot of people didn't even get to go to the draft and yeah. be there in person. Um, For you, it was actually really interesting because I felt like, and Scott and I have talked about this, we felt like we were experiencing the draft and draft night and draft day through the lens of your family and kind of seeing how they reacted to you being drafted and Mm -hmm. how awesome a moment it was for them. Now, what people don't know is how busy you are after you get drafted. Like crazy busy, right? That's what I don't Uh, think people realize when you go to the draft, how busy you are the moment your name's called and then boom, you're, you're gone the rest of the day. Walk us through the people for the people who don't know what that night is really like. Yeah. um, Honestly, that's probably, I mean, it was one of the best nights of my life, but at the same time, one of the most stressful nights of my life, just because it was just so much stuff that was going on after the fact of everything Mm -hmm. happened. Everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody wants to know how you're feeling. Everybody wants to just know everything about the situation, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, But, yeah, I even cut it short after my whole draft night. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted to go hang out with my friends. I wanted to go hang out with my family and just celebrate, you know, what just happened. Um, But, yeah, you're there literally after you drafted until I don't know how long. It was probably, like, some people was there for, like, four hours, five hours after just talking. And it's, like, the same questions over and over and over again, right? By the same people. There's booths that set up, you know. I mean, which was really, really cool. You get to go in there, and you get to do different things. But at the same time, like, your dream just happened. You want to soak it all in and just, you know, and and enjoy it. Especially for somebody who has already said that you like being at home by yourself (laughs) with your dog, right? Like, I I was really, really over it. I I had a call. I think it was um, my agent or somebody and let them know, like, I'm not going to the next booth because I want to go. Yeah. I, I just want to be with my family. My family yeah. You know? So, yeah. I mean, sorry to anybody who booth. <laughs> <by me. I'm laughs> sorry about that, but I just wanted to hang out with my family. So then, okay. So you're, you're going through this crazy car yeah. wash. You're flying in a charter jet across the country and all that stuff. When could you kind of be like, I really did it. Yeah. Right? When did like, you like relax? When you were kind of that. like maybe by yourself and then you, you could have mm-hmm. that moment like, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm the eighth freaking pick in the draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it was, <laughs> I think it was when I woke up from um, the draft night, mm-hmm. and I had to get on the plane right. um, and and do that and fly over here. Um, coach called me early in the morning talking about what number do you want, <laughs> and I was like, "What do you mean? What yeah. number do I want?" <laughs> yeah. He's like, "Well, fifteen is not going to be there, so I think five is going to, you know." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I'm still trying to wake up. Like, what do you? Who is calling <laughs> me? Who am I actually on the phone with yeah. right now?" Yeah, and then so. It, after I hung up the phone, I kind of it kind of hit me, and I was like, "Wow, I really like just accomplished one of my dreams," and that's when it all sunk in. 
Okay, one more question about the draft. I don't know if you remember this, but this was the funniest thing to me. It was it was a video of you getting out of the car for your first steps into um, the into the it, building at Flowery Branch. <laughs> and you get out of the car and you're walking in and it's like really exciting. And everyone was talking about how gimpy you looked when you walked. Like, oh, is he hurt? And you're like, no, that's how it, Drake that walks. That was the <laughs> funniest thing to me because I was like, every, everybody was asking me, he's like, is he hurt? Is he okay? And I'm like, no, I think that's just how he walks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have to say that to a lot <laughs> Yeah, of but... I uh, quoted it on Twitter or did a quoted Quote, tweet yeah. or, or yeah. however you say it. Um, it was all getting on my head about the, the walk. And <laughs> I literally, like, when I say I'm not lying about this, people have asked me for so long, like, why are you limping? <laughs> it's, not, it's not that I'm limping. It's just how I walk. I don't know what it is, <laughs> where I got it from. I don't know if it's a pimp walk or not. It's just, like, it's just it's how I walk. So some people take it the wrong way, and especially I can understand the circumstances. I just broke my ankle. Right, right, right. This, that. But, yeah, it's just how, it's how it's like, I am. I literally just walk like <laughs> yeah. this. Please calm down, everybody. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that's so funny. I had to bring that up because it made me laugh. I was like crying, laughing. Yeah. They're like, "Did you see this?" It's like, "Yes, I did." Yes. No, that's just how he walks. That's just yeah. how he walks, everybody. Um, now to everyone's favorite part of the podcast, we do a rapid fire question where error. everybody basically gets the same questions. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So. Question numero uno: um, What is your favorite play of your career? Now, I do want to throw in a nomination because. <laughs> because she wants to upset me. I want to upset. No, nah, I was going straight there. <laughs> Were, Were you yeah, okay? Really? It, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> is it is it the the multiple broken tackles touchdown against UCLA? I was so mad at you mm. in that moment. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I would Knew say it. that was um that had to be one of my favorite plays just because first off it was the start to a, a huge comeback, mm -hmm. um and then. Second of all is I'm sorry. <laughs> it was against the the uh, Bruins, um, and a team that I never really liked at all. God. And so I'm sorry. It's I'm never sorry. gonna get <laughs> the knife. It's never gonna sound better. <laughs> the knife is just continuing to just twist. I love yeah, it. it was just it was kind of just everything that I thought college football would be in that specific play. Like, you know, all eyes on you. You're just running through a team, and, you, and you're making it happen for your own team. I kind of felt like that was, like, a staple in my college career, or just a career in general. I mean, well, it must have been six tackles, right? I, I mean, yeah. It, it felt like every defender took a shot, mm -hmm. and yeah. nobody brought you down. It was fantastic. Yeah, I felt like I was getting, like, Charmin toilet paper thrown at me. <laughs> 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 yeah, Charmin soft. It's still... <laughs> Comment. You know, I'm almost sorry that I told you that went to UCLA, especially because, no, just with you. especially because the Trojans just uh, went for about 700 yards, right, in the rivalry game. For another it was payback loss. though. Y'all got us in, yeah. in the year before. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. And moving on to a point where I'm where I wasn't a point of humiliation for me. Uh, is there a TV show that you're binging right now? One that you just got done with that you really like? A Anything TV like show that? that I'm binging right now. I don't really watch too much TV. Um, Maybe a movie then? Anything like that? No. Nah. Not a big watcher of things no. outside of football, I guess. No, nah, I mean, <laughs> I would say I did watch a, it's this new show. I don't know. It's just on. It's called White Lotus. Yes. I yeah. just finished oh it. That gosh. show is awesome. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Okay. Did y'all watch the first season and second season? I like the first season more. You yeah. like the first season more? Interesting. Mm. Well, I haven't really like. I mean, I've watched a little bit right. of the second season, but it was kind of on for background noise at the moment. Right, yeah. So I was kind of like, I wasn't. It gets yeah. intense. Yeah. But so yeah, good. I just finished it like last week. Excellent choice. I'm Excellent a big choice. White Lotus fan. It's yeah, a great movie. I like so how it's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. My turn. Yeah. Third, the third <laughs> question. Where is your favorite place to eat? And this can be in California mm -hmm. or it can be in Atlanta. The choice is yours. Um. So I'm sorry, Atlanta. I haven't ventured out that much. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> To find a great spot. It's okay. You're kind of a busy dude. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but I would say in LA, uh, our receiver our receiver group mm -hmm. at SC would go to Harold and Bell's before every training camp. Um, it's a nice little southern. Uh, sorry. Uh, what is it? 
southern food mm -hmm. yeah ah. so like fried catfish fried oysters you got um fried chicken mac and cheese greens all That's, that good stuff wow yeah so I, I really like that place and then another one is in and out i mean, just gotta have that. yeah that, I, I mean that's a good. it's interesting too that this place was very southern and you ended up in Atlanta. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. All, it's like another full circle moment. Mm -hmm. Now this is not a question. I'm just curious. What was kind of uh, being from California and then coming to middle of Georgia? What's kind of been the biggest <laughs> difference in Southern culture? Weather. Weather. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. There are seasons here. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. it's that yeah, it I'm not used to either. Uh, freaking track and hot with the hu humidity and yeah but it's it's cool though it's just a little bit more i mean uh, not a little bit a lot more intense than <laughs> um california weather like mm. you kind of get everything everything just kind of just stays in the middle right it's not too high or too low but this yeah it, you kind of feel every season i remember with the one of the first times we talked to you in rookie mini camp and you it was in may and it was like a beautiful like 78 77 degree weather and you came over and he's like it's hot now i think i even said like just wait we, uh, when yeah. we get to august it'll be hurting you'll be hurting and it got like that <laughs> yeah it, 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 I, I was right yeah don't it worry most, it don't most worry. certainly did uh who is the falcon that you hang out with the most now i gotta say this one on this <laughs> no i'm <laughs> dead no. uh, uh desmond Either desmond, desmond um tyler fitz Okay, I saw on, I don't know if which Instagram of y'all's, but y'all went bowling one time. Mm -hmm. Who's the best bowler? Oh, no, that's a good question. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably have to give it, I'm going to say me, but I'll probably have to give it to Tyler. Really? Yeah. 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 He's like a little bowling ball in and of himself when he's like running on the field. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. You can the tell him I said that too. is a good bowler. Uh, <laughs> and the final one. Which sometimes people struggle with. But yeah, we, but we we've like gotten it. some good answers from, from this one, too. What is your biggest pet peeve? Oh. Damn. I, I so, just went over this. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a few answers that I really like. Mm, one of my favorites was um, Avery Williams. He said that he doesn't like it when people say salmon instead of salmon, which was one of the most like specific. Spe <laughs> yeah, specific pet peeves I've ever heard. Caleb McGarry talked about like guys peeing on the toilet. Yeah, a, a very typical Caleb McGarry answer, if you ask me. <laughs> um, yeah, Richie Grant better. talked about like slow drivers and terrible like drivers. terrible yeah. drivers. Um, so those are some of the ones that that we've had on the pod. Yeah, I'm probably have to go with Richie on that one. Really, yeah, that's okay. one of my biggest pet peeves. If you're in the left lane and <laughs> and you're not going the speed limit. I'll mm -hmm. say that right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you got to go. You got to you, you got to you got to move over to the right or something. Bro. Will they get a tap on the horn from Drake London? No, nah, I don't no. touch my horn. No. Really? Just no. Nah. Okay, so I'm super passive aggressive and I'll just <laughs> I'll ride them and just like literally just be like move over. <laughs> Cuz if you're going 65 in the left-hand lane, like you deserve to be written. Like your <laughs> your tail deserves to be to be written because it's just uh, it's unacceptable to me. I get really like mad about it. No, it, yeah. it does infuriate me. Yeah, yeah. And, but hopefully no one will be infuriated after listening to this fun podcast. Wow. Thank you, guys. What, what a transition, <laughs> right? I was like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna get that to that? good one. Get to the exit. But anyway, you think we get paid for this or something? Or something. Amazing, man. Can y'all do us a big favor? Rate, review, subscribe to the Atlanta Falcons podcast network mm -hmm. and definitely listen to this one and all the other awesome guests we got coming up after Drake London. Drake, thanks for stopping by. Thank you guys for having me. And we will talk to y'all next week. Woohoo!